Hello, Michael Ryan is my name and I'm a counsellor and psychotherapist. And today's talk is brought to you by Mead County Council and Healthy Ireland at your libraries. In this recorded webinar, we will be talking about family well-being during a crisis. We are all in the same boat. This is a statement I hear very frequently since the start of this COVID-19 crisis. But the statement is not really true. We are not all in the same boat, but we are all in the same storm. And the truth is, some boats are well fortified with a big crew and other boats are smaller, more vulnerable perhaps with a skeleton crew. And some people are in a canoe on their own. And this goes for all our communities, whether it's your school community, whether it's your work community, or just your physical community where you live. We all come from different types of families and your family situation is unique to you. So it's important that whoever is in your family, that you look out for each other at this time. The unique nature of the stress during this coronavirus is unusual, but the virus in of itself has brought levels of stress. There's issues around the economy. Some people have exam stresses at this time. Others are stressed because their daily routine has been put out of kilter. There's an unpredictability around this whole thing. We're all worried, of course, about ourselves, about each other in the family, and about elderly people maybe that we can't get to see. And then there's just a sense of unsafeness also. There are people with masks and gloves. There's just a kind of an uneasiness. This whole thing, of course, a lot of the things we just mentioned, um, some people will be stressed, afraid, and frightened. Whereas others are relaxed, carefree, and relatively unaffected. When we look at this, we see that on the left-hand side, everything is disordered, and how we like things to be is on the right-hand side. We like things to be uniform and routine and ordered. And we've had to kind of learn to live in this sense of disorder for the past while. Of course, some days will be like this in the house, all cheerful, all happy, but there are other days that are just the opposite. We have to learn to manage change. And so when we look at this graph, at the very start, we were kind of on the edge of the cliff, not really knowing what was happening. We could hear some stuff coming out of Wuhan and Italy and various other places. And at the start, we were like, well, this might not take too long to kind of get through, it might not impact us so much. And there was a kind of a resistance. But thankfully, we didn't resist it as much as other countries. And we did start to put actions into place, which has paid off in the long term. We went into a state of chaos, not knowing how schools were going to operate, having to close businesses, not knowing how shops were going to operate. But over the last little while, then, we've noticed that we're in this transforming idea and even into the stage of integration where we now have a roadmap for the future. The new status quo has yet to be seen and has yet to arrive, so we'll, we'll have to just wait and see what that's going to be like. Um, and when it comes, we'll manage it then. Hopefully, it'll be sooner rather than later. When we look at change management, we have to accept that change is inevitable. We have to embrace it, we have to tackle it head on and acknowledge it and be proactive about taking charge of what you can control. I'll have a slide about that in a little minute. Try and find humour in the situation. This bursts the bubble of stress around change. You've got to try and remind yourself at all times that you've successfully managed to deal with change and challenging situations in the past. And remind yourself you've gotten through 100% of the worst days of your life so far, and you'll get through this also. New routines have developed, and others will emerge in time. Congratulate yourself and others for their flexibility and commitment to these adjustments. When we look at this slide, we have to consider all of the things that we have already been through. And this slide changes quite frequently as new things occur. I'm not going to go down through each item on this, but perhaps when I'm finished the list, you might want to pause this video for a minute and just take a look at all of the different things that we've been through over the past, say, eight or 10 weeks and all of the different things that you've already gotten used to during this time. So it's important to let go of what is not within your control and take charge only of what is within your control and where your power is. So what are those things? Your family, your time, your own development, your behaviors, your connections, your spending, your space, your, your nutrition, your hygiene, your physical self and your contribution during this time. These are the things that you can control and the rest we have to leave to the experts who are more experienced than us to manage the broader sense of this crisis. When we look at homeschooling, 
here are a few tips that might help. Get everyone involved in the plan because people who are involved in making a plan are much more committed to executing that plan. Your situation is unique to you. Chill out if it's not perfect and try and not compare yourself to others. If you compare, you will despair. Try and give teens some personal space. Try and balance the day between work, rest and play. I know the last two will come easily. It's more difficult to try and balance the work bit. Try and get the hardest work out of the way first. Keep connected to the school. The support is there and the team are understanding and patient. They will help to make this as good as your situation allows. Here's a nice statement. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Because how you react to it is where your power is. Limit your exposure to news about COVID-19. Try and only have a couple of times a day when you actually get updates. And at times you may need to just forget about WhatsApp because uh, it can get just overloaded with messages. Whether they're nice or funny or serious, and um, all of them are just a little bit stressful when they come in such bulk. Let's look at salvaging a disastrous day in lockdown. So let's say you get to the middle of the afternoon and everything seems to be going wrong. Everyone is fighting and there's a lot of tension in the house. So here's a few tips to maybe salvage this day. Switch off all the devices, no more news, no more new projects. Don't think failure, think reset. Take a shower, refresh yourself, you're starting from new. Do only low thinking chores. Avoid the need for perfection and maybe tidy a space. So what we're trying to do with these chores and tidying the space and doing some niggling admin tasks is you're trying to get a few wins under your belt. You're trying to change, turn the day around so that you get a couple of wins and then you start to feel like it's not such a disaster of a day after all. Then reboot your physical system. Even a short burst of physical exercise will help to relieve the frustration. Write off the day from any scores, any of your Fitbit or step counters or any of those things. No guilt today. Write off the day from these scores. Today doesn't count. Bookend your day with some kind of a ceremony. Cup of tea, watch Netflix, read a book, watch TV. And just know that tomorrow will be a better day. Here's another neat saying. My life has been full of terrible misfortune, most of which never happened. And that was from Michel de Montaigne. And he was a chronic worrier. And of course, most of the things he worried about didn't come true. So he spent his entire life worrying about a whole bunch of stuff that he didn't need to worry about. In reality, only about 8% of what we worry about is worth worrying about. So my suggestion is when you're worried, try and figure out a place in your head that you can go to when you're worried. So if you're younger, that might be maybe a fairground or play, playing football or riding a horse or doing ballet or dancing or something like that or visiting your grandparents. Um, you know, if you're a bit older, you might be just mad about m mathematics and just do equations in your head if that's what floats your boat. Older people might want to think of a hobby that they do or, or something that they enjoy doing. And so just have that as a place to go in your head. Resetting your system is a great way of busting any anxiety in your system. So again, um, I would say during this time, maybe set a fitness goal for yourself. And by the end of this, you'll have upped your fitness levels and you'll have lowered your anxiety. Like I mentioned earlier, a good tip for any day in relation to anxiety busting is to do difficult tasks first thing in the morning. Because once you do them, they're not sitting on the back of your mind, annoying you and waiting to be done. Doing a random act of kindness is a great way to relieve stress also. Because what happens is you switch your attention from a negative thing into something that's more positive and you feel like you're back in control, you're back doing something positive, and of course the other person benefits also. Practicing gratitude is another great way to relieve stress because being grateful gives you power and mastery in a crisis. It banishes fear and replaces that fear with a positive feeling of being grateful for what you have. Taking up creative expression is another great way to relieve stress and anxiety. Whether it's learning an instrument, doing a, a, an art installation outside, writing, sculpting, poetry, anything that can 
bring out some cre creativity in you, great way to relieve stress. Of course, some people will wish to continue to worry. So what I would suggest is become a worried warrior. Do your necessary amount of worrying, but you also got to keep going and be as productive as you can. If there are any domestic disagreements in the house, here are a few tips to help with that. Decide to choose your battles. Maybe not everything needs to be argued about. Sometimes you have to decide, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Don't throw in the kitchen sink issues. And what I mean by that is don't try and bring up old issues or throw it all into the one argument. If you have a disagreement, try and stick to whatever that is about and just try and resolve that one particular thing. Let old issues go and choose not to drag up old wounds. Allow space for each other to have privacy every day and respect the need if others are in another room. Try and be generous with others in the household. Agree times to discuss issues in the household. Maybe a time where you know you'll have peace and quiet and you might both have calmed down and have an opportunity to talk about things in a calmer environment. Try and use I statements as opposed to you statements because that conveys the message that you are trying to find solutions to the challenges you're facing. Taking in the good. So according to Rick Hansen, negative experiences stick to the body like Velcro, whereas positive experiences tend to wash through the body like water through a sieve. So in times of crisis, we've got to allow positive experiences to settle in our system rather than allow them to wash through. So as you encounter a positive experience, try and stop, try and notice it, and try and hold on to it. When we think about looking after ourselves, I often think of the Pillars of Wellness by Dr. Rangan Chatterjee. Um, he actually had just four pillars and I kind of cheekily um, added a fifth one of community. So we talk in this about relaxation, about movement, community, nutrition and sleep. So we've got to try and keep a balanced diet, try and avoid comfort eating and try and avoid any bad nutrition habits we may have gotten into. We've got to keep moving. As I said earlier, all kinds of exercises are great for stress relief and you've got to maintain your body as you go through life to be one of the strong pillars of life. Good sleep is also another great pillar. So on the right hand side there, what we're suggesting is we don't have TVs in the room, no caffeine after lunchtime and no blue light when we're trying to go to sleep. And then on the left hand side, you'd see positive things like reading a book, Maybe listening to a podcast if you need some help from Calm or Relax or some of those um, apps that maybe could help you. And also the Grateful Diary that we mentioned earlier. So anything that you're grateful for, gratitude is a great way to drift off to sleep in a very positive way. Record your experience during this crisis. Journaling, blogging, vlogging, talking. Any way to get any concern, concerns, worries and experiences out it's great. And you'll have this as a reminder in later life to look back on and see how did you cope during this time. Staying connected is very important. And of course, with social distancing, that is a little trickier now than before. So you'll have to use all the tools available to you. Mostly they're going to be electronic tools to try and stay connected to your family, your friends, your colleagues and your community. Set time aside each week to check in on each other, collectively and individually. You can do this easily over meal times, but sometimes we might need to actually schedule in times on a one-to-one -one basis to check in with everybody, or even as a group, just to discuss how things are going and just to make sure everyone is okay. As Winston Churchill once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to do something to be proud of at the end of this crisis. Get some goals to achieve. Now, goals should be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. S-M-A-R-T, SMART goals. So these would be the five pillars that we spoke about earlier, plus also maybe a couple of creative things, like learning an instrument, doing some art, learning to paint, or doing some renovations. And I want to wish you good luck in achieving those goals. So I hope you got something out of that. So on behalf of me, the County Council, and Healthy Ireland at your libraries, this is Michael Ryan signing off. Thank you for watching.